Hi friends, this is Caitlin and welcome back for day four of my October Eve 2022 series. Today I'm going to be making a really sweet My Favorite Things card with the Best Witches stamp set, which is absolutely gorgeous. And I'm going to be adding in the Simon Says Stamp Tangled Web embossing folder for a really pretty background. We're going to have some fun with that. And then the pattern paper I'm gonna be using today is the um, black and white plaid from My Favorite Things as well. And we're gonna be doing a really fun mix of ink blending and Copic coloring. Make sure you hit that subscribe button now before you forget so that way you don't miss out on the rest of October Eve or any of my regular Friday videos sharing crafty inspiration with you. So I'm gonna get started by folding my card base. I've been trying to do this with all of my cards so that way they actually make it into a card and I don't just end up with a panel. If I wait till the end, most of the time I'll forget. So I've been making my card bases right at the beginning now and I'm starting out with this piece of Nina Solar White 80 pound cardstock. I'm die cutting that with one of the My Favorite Things stacked, stitched, stitch rectangle stacks dies <laughs> just the single stitch all the way around I wanted to make sure that it was the size that I wanted going into it so I would know that my um, spider web was in the right place so I'm gonna be doing two different layers of ink blending here I'm going in with my brighter colors first I'm starting with my twisted citron and I'm just kind of breaking my panel into three sections so then I'm going in with seedless preserves and I'm going to make sure that they overlap in the middle, but I'm not concerned about a smooth blend and you'll see why when it comes time to use our embossing folder. So this is really nice if you are kind of newer to ink blending or you don't have time to worry about a seamless blend. This is definitely a fun technique to use um, whenever you need. So the last one is carved pumpkin and I'm going in with that right across the bottom. I didn't worry about these being like evenly split up or anything like that. And you could also swap these colors out for any color inks that you like. But now that I have all my colors in place, I'm going to situate my cardstock inside my embossing folder. And I'm doing this so that it's being pushed in to the color. So I'm going to have these kind of divots where the spider web is. Instead of it being raised up, I want it pressed inside. So now I'm going in with my black soot right over the top and I'm making sure that I have a lot of ink on my sponge and I'm not pushing down very hard. This is going to help to make sure that the color only sits on those top areas and it skips over the valleys of those spider web lines. So that way that the color is what kind of pops out nice and bright um, as a spider web. And you'll still see some of that color obviously through the black soot. I didn't cover it completely up. It kind of just looks spooky and cloudy. I just think this is so fun. So to give it a little bit of sparkle, I pulled in one of the new mica stains from Tim Holtz. I absolutely love the shimmer on this. I'll hold it up in a second. Look at that, it's so beautiful. You get some bigger splatters, but the mist of it just makes the whole panel this like beautiful gunmetal shimmer. Oh, it's so gorgeous. I'll have all the colors for everything and the names of all the products I use today listed down in that description box below for you. So you can always go down there to check it out. I'm stamping out my images with the Simon Says Stamp Intense Black Ink on my Copic Express It paper. This is my go-to Copic coloring combo. I love how it stamps and I love how it fast it dries and I never have to worry about my stuff smearing. So I'm going in with my kind of go-to Caucasian skin tone to start using my E04, E13, E11, E00, and R20 to shade in my little witch's skin. She doesn't have a ton of skin showing and I really am trying to keep the center of her face nice and bright. And as per usual, all of my Copic colors will be listed down in the description box below for you too. I always try to keep my caps on the screen for you, um, but just in case you ever miss them or I've sped it up to, so that you miss or it goes too quickly, you can always see the list down there. So I decided to give her a black shirt, black leggings, and a black hat. I really wanted this to be still obviously very cute, but still on the spooky traditional Halloween side, kind of tying in the classic Halloween tertiary colors, the green, purple, and orange. 
and I think that the perfect complement to that is lots of dark black coloring but obviously with shading it can't just be straight black so I'm using my neutral gray markers and I'm making sure that every piece has at least some kind of white space at that last step so that I can highlight with the N4, which is a pretty light gray. But once everything is said and done, this will still give it nice dimension and your eye will still look at it and read it as black. So I added those same black shades to the woodwork part of the chair. I thought this would be fun and it's still another way to keep it a little darker and more spooky than a wood tone and just to add even more contrast. So again, using those same gray markers to just kind of deepen those edges. Some of those lines are pretty tiny, so definitely take your time and make sure that you are kind of using just the very tip of your marker. I feel like this would be a good set too if you are um, a pencil colorist uh, because some of those lines are so fine it would be easier to get in there with a well sharpened pencil but that is just not the life for me. So if you do try it with colored pencils or Copics make sure that you tag me in anything that you've been inspired to create over on Instagram. Um, I would absolutely love that. I'm Caitlin Annalee over there as well. Sorry, Caitlin Annalee Cards over there as well. Um, and you can always tag me in anything, especially if you have uh, like somebody's doing a giveaway and you need to tag a friend. I'm throwing it out there. You can always tag me in those. I will never be upset with you. I'll never tell you to stop. So <laughs> you can definitely use me for those. And I went in to give her orange on her skirt and her handkerchief and then or her little scarf and then I'm using the same orange shades to color in my pumpkins. I kept them pretty sleek and clean for me. I usually give my pumpkins a lot more kind of lumps and bumps but this just the drawings of these are so simple and cute that I wanted to keep my coloring also very kind of clean and on the more simple side. So I am just doing some very soft shading on each of the lobes where they would kind of dent in as well as the top and the bottom and trying to still keep a brighter highlight right on that middle section. I use the same brown tones throughout my card. So the E59 and 57 are going to be on all of the stems of the pumpkin, her boots, the broom handle and then her hair as well as adding in an E55 there and I just thought that that would be nice to kind of streamline everything and not make it too busy or too distracting. I find that limiting my color palette really helps me to make something that looks really cohesive and I just generally like the way things turn out better if I try to limit myself. Some scenes when they're really complicated full scene cards I definitely veer away from that but on something that's more simple like this with just the little images and we're not really making a whole scene with a, a scene background I do like to limit myself. That's also why I use those same neutral grays to shade in my bat, just going on the lighter side so that I could use the N2 on his face, just so that I could make sure his expression was still super um, legible. You could see his little face, and I gave him, of course, little blush marks on his cheeks because, hi, my name is Caitlin, and I'm addicted to stamped critters with blushy cheeks. So I also added in some of that lime neon green on her little bow and went in with a white gel pen just to highlight the eyes of the little girl and the bat as well as give her some stripes on her little scarf. So I grabbed one of the kind of gray on black, black on black um, plaid papers from that paper pad. I'm going to be adding that to my card base with some liquid glue. I had to switch up my glue because that one got a little clogged. So I'm just going to lay that down flat and trim off the little bit of extra card base that's hanging off on the side. And then it's time to for the whole card to come together. The first step was deciding if the center point of my spider web should be in the top right corner or the bottom left corner. So I'm just kind of holding it up with the chair and I decided to put it in the right upper corner so it would be over top of the chair and kind of tie in with all of that purple. So I adhered that down with some tape runner and then I'm doing a rough layout of where all my little pieces are going to go. I like to do this just to make sure that I have a solid plan before I start gluing everything down, especially because I'm going to be using a combination of liquid glue and foam squares. So I glued my chair and my broom down flat with liquid glue 
And then I also glued the bigger pumpkin over in the left bottom corner with liquid glue. And then I'm gonna be using foam squares to glue down the witch and that smaller pumpkin so that he's overlapping the other pumpkin and the broom who's gonna get tucked kind of right in the middle. And I just love the very like subtle dimension that these foam squares give. These ones are from Simon Says Stamp. I think they're a perfect thickness. And I love that they come in these bigger squares and they also come in the mini squares, which is what I'm going to end up bringing in to attach the bat with his little jack-o'-lantern later. Uh, for the sentiment, I wanted to heat emboss on the same matching plaid pattern paper that I was using for my background mat. So I took a scrap of that and I um, used my anti-static powder brush from Pink and Main as well as my embossing watermark ink. Then I went in with just some plain white embossing powder and uh, got that all applied. I put the rest into uh, my printer paper and then I just fold that in half so I can pour it right back into the jar. And for one, something like this where it's so small, I've seen that other people use like clothespins and stuff like that, which is definitely an option, but I have this silicone heat proof mat that I bought for doing my wax seals. And so I found that if I heat emboss up against it, it just helps to make sure I don't burn myself and also make sure that my paper doesn't warp too badly. So I added some liquid glue to the back of my sentiment using a little T-square to make sure it is nice and straight. And then those are the tiny little mini foam squares that I'm adding to my bat and my jack-o'-lantern so that he is just barely popped up on top. And the shimmer and shine from that spray and this whole car just makes me so happy. I hope that you enjoyed. I'll see you again tomorrow. And as always, happy crafting.